Hey everyone, Will Brink here, BrinkZone.com. Uh, today is, or this video, is going to be an interesting topic. At least I think it is. Um, it's going to delve into a, a new paradigm or newish paradigm that is taking place in the sort of uh, understanding of atherosclerosis, atherosclerotic disease in humans. Um, I gotta, I'm going to try not to go down to too many rabbit holes because it's, it's one of those topics that's really easy to go down a bunch of rabbit holes. going to try to sort of stick to the, the key topic here, but I think people will definitely find this, this one interesting. Um, you know, so there's the paradigm shift in the understanding of atherosclerosis or atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease or ASCVD um, is that ASCVD is at least partially a normal aspect of human aging. Um, and a lot of things, a lot of uh, ideas uh, about ASCVD um, that we've been taught over the, over the decades are just not quite accurate. Uh, of course, you know, what, what we've been told for ever and ever is that basically cardiovascular disease or ASCVD is a is, is, is relatively new uh, issue, uh, and it is caused strictly by lifestyle, you know, uh, diet, lack of exercise, and all that. And that is clearly not true. Um, and there's a couple of, there's dip, a couple of different lines of evidence that I'm going to discuss a little bit um, with, with you guys. Uh, sorry, I'm, it's a topic that I sort of have to think ahead a couple of steps to, you know, have this make sense. Um, but uh, again, so we have we have a couple of really interesting lines of evidence um, as to as to that is not a modern disease. In fact, it's been with us probably forever. Uh, nor is it completely caused by lifestyle. Now, obviously, lifestyle plays an important role. We're not we're not going to deny that lifestyle does not play a role. Of course, it does, and we'll we'll get to that in a minute. But you know, somebody coined the the expression that. You know, not everyone dies from ASCVD, but virtually everyone dies with ASCVD. And, well, how do we know that? Uh, well, one of them is mummies, uh, studies in, in mummies that, uh, you know, they're, they're, those studies have been around a while, but they were limited to some Egyptian mummies. The, these mummies were royalty uh, and stuff. So people sort of dismissed the fact that mummies have ASCVD. These are younger mummies, um, but uh, people sort of dismissed it to say, well, these were, these were royalty. They probably had very rich diets. That doesn't really prove anything. That's fine. I, I mean, I can see why they wouldn't lock onto it. But there has been uh, quite a few studies since, and looking at mummies, uh, and we're talking, you know, 4,000 plus years, but mummies from a number of different societies. Uh, I'll link it. I'll link the study below, or one of them. Really good. Uh, but so there has been multiple studies since looking at mummies from a number of different continents, mummies from different walks of life, different status, uh, and all that. And most of these mummies, uh, the vast majority of these mummies, at all ages, some of them even like teenagers and such, had ASCVD. Now. Um, Obviously, the, the question would be, you know, uh, how advanced and all that. So we know that certainly through these, these mummies and, uh, that uh, heart disease or, or vascular disease, let's ASCVD, is not a new phenomenon at all. Uh, in fact, even the, uh, the caveman um, that they found, he's, I forget what they call him, but anyway, he also had uh, ASCVD. Um, well, again, I don't even know if it's AS, technically ASCVD in that it, is, it, is it at the level of disease? Um, you know, that's a, a question that uh, is not that easy to answer. Because, again, if it's a normal aspect of human aging, you, you are, you're sort of, there's a line there where, you know, do you get to the point where it is a disease state? That is, is it causing you, is it causing you problems? So that's one line of evidence um, you know, again, a lot of people maybe not aware of this, that uh, children, uh, young children, uh, when they, you know, on autopsy, 
uh, when they die of you know something else, uh, you know an accident or whatever, have the early stages do have uh, will often have lesions. Um, the the early state, very earliest stages of ASCVD. Um, so the it, um, it's not an uncommon thing. They used to find in uh, young soldiers in Vietnam that type of thing. They also found that. So that's an important uh, line of evidence um, to to consider. Another one which may sort of seemingly seem to be coming from a, a different direction, but uh, is still, it, you, it, will, it will make sense, it will converge as to what they think is going on. So another one is uh, the difference in chimpanzees. So chimpanzees, as most of you know, are our closest relative. They share 98% uh, of our DNA. And yet, uh, chimpanzees almost never, I'm not gonna say never, but let's just call it very rarely, suffer from ASCVD, and yet they have much higher uh, cholesterol levels than humans do. So that is again, and they do live a long time, and they don't live as long as people, but they still can live quite a while. So that's a pretty interesting line of evidence too, and there's a, a paper below, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll link that too, that's quite good. Um, it's, it's interesting to note, again, that like really like uh, infants and really young children uh, generally have much lower levels of um, ApoB uh, or LDLC, but uh, we'll we'll talk about the difference in those two. And so the 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 issue is, or at least the sort of convergence of these different lines of evidence that are contrary to uh, in, in what we've been told, which is like I say, uh, heart disease or ASCVD. Uh, is you know a new phenomenon, a new problem due to our uh, strictly our lifestyle, um, and uh, was was not an issue in early humans, and that's like I say, not true. Uh, it's also like I say not a an issue uh, in our closest relatives, and the reason for that, what we think is going on, is brings us back to the inflammatory uh, aspect of uh, of heart disease or ASCVD. Um, the, the ubiquity of, of atherosclerosis in modern era may reflect selective pressure that enhance the innate, uh, innate immune response at the cost of atherogenesis and other chronic disease states, say, states, uh, states the paper, one of the papers that I'll link. And so what do they mean by that? So the difference between, for example, chimps and uh, humans in this respect, may be the innate immune response that we, our immune system, is more active. Uh, that we develop uh, partially. The reason we develop ASCVD is this chronic uh, inflammatory uh, issue that of which we, you know, don't have all that much control over all the time. It's something that we are that is part of our our genetics, our our DNA. Now, um, this would bring us back to. Uh, two well, two two topics. A, how much control do we have? I.e., how much does uh, lifestyle actually play a role? And what is the 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 interplay between atherogenic particles? I.e., uh, what is the the particles that um, become lesions and become you know blockages? Uh, so one of the papers that I read estimated that the lifestyle uh, contribution to ASCVD is about 50%. But I've seen different, that, that's not, of course, um, that's not locked in stone, of, of course. Uh, you know, the, 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 the number I, I see come up or the estimated uh, lifestyle contribution uh, is 50%. But again, it, I've seen other papers that have it less. I've had seen papers that had it more. But the point being, I would just say, is that clearly lifestyle, i.e. diet, exercise, and all that, plays a, a major contribution uh, through the two routes, which A is inflammation, how, how well you are able to mitigate infl inflammation, but you can't, you just cannot uh, erase, you can't get rid of it, of course. And of course, your, uh, what your LDLC or your ApoB levels are, um, which two of both of which you have a, a fair amount of control over it. Let's like say 50% is still quite a bit, but it is a really interesting convergence of, of the, these old studies or the studies with the mummies and newer studies with chimpanzees and stuff where it sort of converges. They, in both papers, 
they again postulate that it is the immune response, the inflammatory response of humans specifically as a species that we have, uh, uh, that we live with and that we have to deal with. Um, so the, the, the interesting thing, I think some of the take home here um, as far as our understanding again, and I, and I actually have a, a video, I did a whole, I did a talk not that long ago um, which I also made a video out of about uh, immunity or inflammation and, and the immune system and um, disease, but specifically as it relates to uh, ASCVD, which I'll post below. But it, it's bringing back the importance of inflammation, um, the, the contribution of inflammation, chronic inflammation uh, in, in the process of ASCVD um, that does not I just want to be very clear here that does not eliminate uh, or disprove you know the lipid model of, of, of atherosclerosis lipids uh, atherogenic lipids are clearly part of the uh, of the milieu as they would say uh, the combination of elevated lipids which is certainly part of our our lifestyle but regardless uh, and the uh, inflammatory responses and uh, the the issue well in inflammation in cardiovascular disease ASCVD uh, is starting to get really get the attention it deserves and should uh, I think it's still it's still not getting all the attention and the focus it should clearly uh, there's you know there is definitely debate among the medical community as to um, how to how to approach it? How to deal with it? Uh, you will find that there's not much denial anymore, as far as you know, at least in in the in the cardiology world circles, they're not denying you know the the importance of inflammation uh, in the in the the process of ASCVD, but they're still sort of saying, well, yeah, of course it's part of it, but uh, there's not there's really no way to modify it or or treat it type of thing. Obviously, I don't agree with that. So we're going to just continue to treat the lipid aspect of it. And if you can get your ApoB low enough, you know you're not going to see uh, you're not going to see a, a problem with ASCVD. Um, I, I think that's I think that's a cop out. And uh, I think I, I think we will, of course, as time goes on. Well, you're going to see drugs, of course, at some point. Or they're already in development. They're already being tested as to you know, uh, addressing um, inflammation, chronic inflammation, which is, uh, of course, a, a common issue in our modern times. Uh, also, of course, it increases with age. Um, but uh, I will tell you that there's not really much denial as to its importance, but there is definitely still the, the sort of attitude is, well, there's nothing clinically that we can do about it, so we're just going to, you know, we're just going to focus on the lipids. Uh, and again, I, I think that's a mistake. I think some of the really interesting parts about this that people should appreciate is that ASCVD is, is, takes decades and decades to develop to the point of um, manifesting as, you know, as being problematic, i.e. having, you know, whether it's uh, heart attacks, uh, what have you, whether it's angina, whether it's what have you. But, and so the earlier that you address that, the better. You know, when people have, have heart issues or have vascular issues, I mean, we're obviously the heart's the, the biggie, but I mean, if you, when people start to have ASCVD to the point where it is, you know, clinically, you know, uh, medically problematic, that has been decades and decades of exposure. The, I think our, our minds, when we have something like that happen to us, say, well, I've, I've got heart disease now, I've got to do something about it. But as, as, as I said earlier, uh, even if you don't die from it, now, and remember, it's the number one killer, so most of you watching this are going to die from ASCVD, but even if you don't die from it, you're going to die with it. Uh, almost nobody is going to escape this, and that starts at a very early age. As I say, the, the, it's a lifetime exposure, and uh, I think some of the takeaway from that is that um, it's probably, like say, part of, of what we, who we are as a species, um, and like I say, it may reflect a selective pressure that that enhanced innate immune response uh, is uh, uh, at the cost of atherogenesis is also kept us alive longer than maybe other than other species and as a as a uh, response to uh, exposure to 
you know, uh, pathogens, viruses, who knows exactly why, but it's part of who we are. Uh, it's definitely something to address as early as possible. You want to, it would seem like I say the two sort of, the, the, the two key aspects are the chronic, uh, the chronic inflammation and the, uh, ap uh, the atherogenic particles, which is the uh, ApoB basically. Um, again, I'm trying not to go down a, a separate uh, rabbit hole. I, I would just say a quick discussion about uh, LDLC versus ApoB. Uh, again, ApoB is starting, I would say, to get the attention that it should. So you all know what LDL is now, but LDL, uh, LDLC is calculated. Uh, it's not. It's not actually a direct measurement. Now, you, there are assays uh, to directly. Uh, measure LDL, but ApoB, which is apoprotein B, is better. It is more accurate. It is a direct measurement of the of the atherogenic particles uh, floating around that you would want to uh, address. Um, I don't personally think there's any. Um, I don't think there's real, from my perspective, and you know other people that really research this. I, I don't think there's really any debate as to the importance of of LDLC slash ApoB in the the process of uh, atherogenesis, uh, but of course it's, it's not the only thing. Um, again, inflammation, chronic inflammation, uh, is as basically as a human being and the lifestyle factors. But it's interesting to note that um, there are a small number of people. It's like 10, 15 percent, but there are around that percentage of people that don't have any of the known risk factors who still have heart attacks uh, and die. Um, now, it's not a, a, it's not a large number of people, but that group of people, are, are the issue is probably um, inflammation. Uh, and you can, of course, test inflammation via a high, sensitivity, high sensitivity CRP. Uh, there are other tests that actually may be even a little more accurate, but I, that's an easy one. But again, uh, it's interesting to note that very few medical professionals uh, test uh, in, inflammation uh, as, a, as a risk factor to heart disease and ASCVD. And, and I think they should. I think it should be you know, part of the normal panel that uh, is run. Uh, they run, you know, obviously they, if they do a lipid panel, what have you, you know, they, they look at um, LDLC, HDL, and uh, triglycerides and all that. But I think a, a panel of uh, a, a risk factor um, is definitely going to be your uh, ongoing inflammation. The debate, I don't think, and I don't think there's really any debate there or controversy in that statement. I think the, the controversy, or at least the, the debate in the, along the, the medical scientific community is, well, what, what can we do about it? What can you do about it? And there are definitely things you can do about it. I have all of that in another video. I discuss nutrition, I discuss exercise, I discuss supplements, uh, and there are also, there are some drugs, certainly uh, there are some medications worth looking into. Um, actually, um, sort of again as a sidebar, uh, one of the uh, benefits of statins is that they lower inflammation. Now that may actually be uh, part of how statins uh, lower the risk of uh, heart disease. Um, now. It's not the only thing. Again, some early on, some people claimed, you know, aha, uh, you know, that's actually the only way statins are having any benefit is by lowering inflammation. It's not having, it has nothing to do with um, ApoB and so on and so forth. And that's not true. But part, one of the benefits of statins is that it does uh, apparently lower um, uh, uh, high, sensitivity, high sensitivity CRP. So that's something to keep, uh, something to keep in mind. Uh, all right, so I'm going to try not to make this one too long. Um, I did say we were going to do a quick, um, yeah, well, I, I guess I covered LDLC. People have, when I've mentioned LDLC and ApoB, questions below the video have popped up about, well, what is ApoB? I, I'm not aware of it. What do I, you know, what do you recommend? And ApoB is a normal blood test. It is more accurate than LDLC. Like I say, LDLC is, is uh, actually a calculated number. It's not a, it's not a direct measurement. And if you're going to, um, directly measure LDLC via an assay, which you can, you might as well just um, test ApoB. ApoB is a direct measurement of the atherogenic um, particles floating around. It's a, uh, it's a protein tag on, the, um, on those LDL particles. 
So uh, I think that's it. Uh, if you got any questions, I hope you like this video. Um, I, it's a, it's obviously this is an ongoing topic of research, but I do think that it, the again various lines of evidence do converge that a uh, ASCVD is is not a, a new phenomenon to humans. Uh, it's probably part of being human. Uh, the issue is really whether or not you you know it it is. Um, becomes medically problematic for you, and that part you probably have quite a bit of control over, but um, I think we, this is yet more support for the immune or the inflammatory model of, of uh, heart disease and ASCVD. Anyway, okay, so that's it. I need more uh, Alpha Joe and coffee here apparently, but I hope that uh, gets the point across that I'm trying to make, and I'll see you guys on the Brink Zone.